So two of those workers are saying, those instruments who support slashing, who's working on who you are? I think I'm, I'm the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, long run, long run, long run. Yeah, I'll start, I guess, but I apologize. I didn't realize what kind of uh, crowd we would have here. Uh, but I, what I will do, I suppose, is if this is okay, if, am I supposed to address you guys, the whole crowd? I mean, I don't, whatever oh. works. <laughs> well, here, here are copies of the, uh, uh, just a, a very brief presentation. Didn't have uh, a PowerPoint, didn't know if we would have the AV. Uh, requirements, but here's a hard copy of it, and I'll just go through it. I apologize to the folks that won't have this in front of them, but I'll. Uh, th this is going to be fairly brief anyway. What's your name? Oh, oh I, I apologize. My name is Brad Richards. I'm with the Illinois Oil and Gas Association. Uh, I will start by telling you I'm not real sure if anybody is leasing in Jackson County. None of them would come to my attention if they are, but I suppose in some respects that's a moot point. I, I understand folks have concerns, uh, and uh, you know I'm here to. Hopefully answer questions if I can. Uh, but again, uh, my name is Brad Richards, Illinois Oil and Gas Association. I am the executive vice president, which is the director of the organization. Uh, and uh, I'm more than happy to try to answer questions if, if, uh, if I can. Uh, and I'm gonna keep this pretty brief, the formal presentation, and let you guys, uh, if you guys have questions, that'd be, that'd be fine. Uh, Hydraulic fracturing has gotten a lot of attention, as you guys apparently now know. Uh, we, uh, we've been hydraulically fracturing wells in Illinois since the 50s. Uh, it's a process whereby you pump sand, water, and chemicals, and that's the reason a lot of these folks are here. Chemicals, into you, you have a, a mixture pumped under, under pressure, and you try to fracture the rock that you're trying to produce oil and gas from. So, I mean, the, conceptually, it's a very simple process. Uh, you take a pump truck and you push the uh, fluid uh, under pressure and uh, at some point hopefully fracture the rock. Uh, most of the hydraulic fracturing done in Illinois, you're probably at best uh, creating fractures, prop uh, propagating fractures that are on the order of feet, maybe <coughs> tens of feet. So it's kind of a near well bore stimulation. And the idea is to improve the permeability around the well bore to allow fluid to uh, uh, flow into the well more readily. And without hydraulic fracturing, there really wouldn't be an oil and gas industry in, uh, in Illinois, uh, or generally in the United States. I mean, hydraulic fracturing is done on virtually every, certainly every plastic rock and, and a lot of the carbonates as well. Uh, what has gotten everyone's attention, of course, is the high volume hydraulic fracturing. Uh, it's the same technology just at a much larger scale. And undeniably, it is a bigger scale. Uh, I had someone describe to me, it's sort of like, I described to you a near well bore well stimulation. The hydraulic fracturing with a combination of horizontal drilling uh, done with high volume uh, is a, uh, a treatment that kind of treats the entire formation uh, for the length of that well bore, as opposed to just you know a few feet around the well bore. But conceptually, it's the same process. I mean, you're trying to fracture the rock. Uh, the difference is we've gone now into the, the oil and gas industry, and I mean, it has been a transformation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the jobs. I know there are folks here who probably aren't concerned about that aspect of it, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the economic uh, development opportunity. Uh, but it has transformed the oil and gas industry in the United States. There are shell plays all over the country. The Bakken shell in North Dakota is probably the best known, but then there's the Marcellus in Pennsylvania, uh, the Eagleford uh, and Barnett in Texas, the Haynesville in Louisiana, on and on. Uh, we now have folks here leasing in Illinois that think there may be a resource type play in Southern Illinois. Meaning, uh, and, the, and the candidates, most likely the New Albany shell, uh, which in this part of the world I'm gonna guess is around 4,000 feet deep. Uh, it, uh, it's a, what has happened is these large scale fractures have opened up previous rocks that were previously deemed to be, to lack the sufficient permeability uh, to produce hydrocarbons with the combination of horizontal drilling, hydraulic fracturing, they are basically opening up vast new reserves. And, it, and it's a pretty uh, significant deal. So for those of you, and again, I apologize to everyone, I had no idea. I, I probably would have tried to set this up as an actual PowerPoint, but for the members of the committee, uh, if you'll kind of go along with me here, and, and for the consideration of the audience here, I'll try 
uh, to uh, explain so that you don't necessarily have to have the hand out in front of you. But hydraulic fracturing, as I said, been doing it a long time. The key to uh, environmentally sound hydraulic fracturing is uh, proper handling of the materials at the surface which I would argue is true of any kind of development that uses any, I mean, any kind of land disturbance. You have to uh, uh, safeguard against spills and things of that nature. And then proper well construction. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to build the well properly. And in Illinois, how we do that, we set a surface casing below the freshwater zone and cement it in. And then you set a production casing. And then you can actually have an intermediate casing, sometimes up to three strings of, of steel pipe, all cemented in. And that becomes the, uh, the well construction that prevents uh, the chemicals that are used, uh, the fluids that are used, from enter entering the groundwater. And uh, I will tell you, we've been doing it a long time. As I said, again, uh, it's a much larger scale uh, process now. But conceptually, it's the same stuff. Uh, and uh, we've done it uh, without incident. Uh, the uh, administrator of the US EPA actually said in testimony uh, there's never been a documented case of groundwater contamination associated with hydraulic fracture. So I, I'm, I'm sure you have some folks that will disagree, but it's, like I said, I will tell you, I'm, I'm not going to put up that. So whatever you guys want to do there. So. Anyway. I can, I can deal with this, it doesn't matter. Okay, so if you go to page two, uh, I think you guys get the idea. I mean, it's all about well construction, it's about proper handling at the surface. Then uh, the uh, second page, it talks about the frack mix. Uh, what goes into it, it's mostly water, about 90% water, uh, probably nine and a half percent sand, and then you've got somewhere around a half a percent that are the chemicals that understandably people are concerned about. I will tell you that most of those chemicals are things like, you know, I saw something in the, uh, I believe it's uh, Wall Street Journal this week or maybe last week talking about, is it, I believe it's, I don't know if it's pronounced war, but the, uh, the chemical or the uh, compound that's used in chewing gum is also used in, to increase the viscosity of uh, the frack fluids. And it's be there are shortages of it. It's being used so, uh, so much. Uh, and there are other chemicals. There's uh, uh, biocides and things that I wouldn't. Sorry. I'm not the chairman of this committee, but I think we could all respect at least his views while he presents them without being interrupted. Yeah, because I, I don't mind going home. I, so, you know, that would be okay. Uh, pardon? Go ahead. Okay. And so, anyway, there's chemicals used. I, I probably wouldn't recommend dra drinking flat frac fluid. Uh, but I don't think that's the objective either. So we're pumping these chemicals into hydrocarbon bearing zones. So people talk about toluene and benzene. Those chemicals come from hydrocarbons. So we're pumping chemicals that originate from hydrocarbon into hydrocarbon bearing zones. It doesn't have to be a big scary uh, thing. But anyway, so there are, if you go to page three, zero confirmed cases of groundwater contamination, hydraulic fracturing. I can, Show you the YouTube clip of Lisa Jackson uh, making that statement. Uh, water use uh, is an issue. There's no question about it. There's water used. Uh, there's a slide here that shows you how that stacks up uh, as compared to things like mining and public water systems, industrial use, et cetera. It'll just, it just it serves to give you some context to the amount of water used. And then management and disposal of recovered frack water, it's a, it's a legitimate issue. Uh, no question about it. Uh, what we do in Illinois, we have class two injection wells that are regulated by Illinois EPA. Uh, those class two injection wells are where most, or currently, frack fluids are disposed of along with produced water. Uh, it's an essential part of our industry. You have to be able to dispose of produced water and, and in this case, flow back from a, a frack job. Uh, it can go to a treatment uh, facility. It won't here in Illinois, I don't suspect. And it can be recycled, and I think that's probably the way that the industry is headed. Uh, these are, you know, anytime they can reuse it, if it makes economic sense, that's what they do. So then I think that other slide's a little bit redundant. It was actually set up, uh, and I apologize, it was meant to be as part of a uh, actual PowerPoint presentation where it showed a kind of a video and animation. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, anyway, again, kind of goes through some of the, uh, the details of well construction. And then I just, I'm going to kind of fast forward to the 
potential economic impact, because I do think this committee should at least understand what could happen here. Uh, in places where there, there's a couple, I mean, there's lots of economic uh, development type issues to go with this. Obviously, there's a lot of jobs being in, created in places where these shell plays have emerged. Uh, I can't sit here and tell you how many jobs are going to be created in Illinois. I don't know. Uh, it may be zero. This may not work. Uh, but if it does work, you can look at other states. If you go to the uh, page seven, uh, projected jobs created by shell development in Ohio. Ohio's oil and gas industry looked just like ours a couple years ago. They had about 4,200 jobs. That's how many we support with our current industry. Uh, they project by 2015, there'll be over 200,000 jobs in the oil industry in Ohio because of the Utica shale. Now, will that happen here in Illinois? I have no idea. And I don't want anybody to walk out of here thinking I'm telling you there's going to be 200,000 new jobs created because of the new Albany or whatever type of development. I don't know that. But I'm telling you, it's happened in other states. Could happen here. And whether Jackson County is going to be a large part of that, I, I have no idea. But Southern Illinois, uh, the university, uh, this could be a huge, huge uh, development opportunity. Uh, and so I think it is worth mentioning. Uh, there are other projected job gains in shell development in other states, which is the slide at the bottom of that page, that uh, you can get the, the flavor of it. There are uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs being created as a result of this technology, the horizontal drilling with high volume hydraulic fracturing, opening up the reserves in these shells. So, on to the next one, the uh, economic development. Uh, again, I use uh, Ohio because I think it's a good comparison to Illinois. Not suggesting it's going to be Illinois' fate, but in Ohio, uh, they project by 2015 it will be a $14 billion industry. So it's substantial. Uh, and it is worth, uh, or excuse me, I think that's, uh, let me read this. 2015. <laughs> uh, yeah, 2015. Uh, yeah, $14 billion industry. It's a, it, could be, it, has, it has potential to be a very big deal. Um, you know, time will tell. So those are kind of the economic developments. The last page that I give you is actually a slide from a presentation from the Illinois State Geological Survey. Um, you don't have to take my word for it. I know there's a lot of folks here that aren't, and that's fine, I don't care. But you can look at our State Geological Survey. They're an independent third party, state of Illinois, the experts on the geology of our state, and among the, and I just gave you the conclusion page, I can give you guys the full 39 uh, page or slide uh, presentation if you'd like it. The gentleman's name is David Morse. Uh, David is just recently retired, I think week before last, but he was the head of uh, Division of Oil and Gas, and then I think the head of coal. But anyway, uh, you can look at his conclusions. Hydraulic fracturing is not new to Illinois, but large scale operations would be. Uh, Evidence suggests that with proper safeguards obtaining shell gas, now he refers to gas, I think this would be gas and liquids, but, but shell gas can be safe as other forms of production and future development, uh, you know, the fracking revolution, more jobs, cheaper energy, they're worth, according to this gentleman, the manageable risk. So that is, in a nutshell, what I have here for you. Uh, and I apologize, again, I, if I recognize what I was walking into, I would have had an actual PowerPoint presentation, or perhaps, I don't know if we would have had the, uh, the setup for it, but, uh, but that's kind of the, the scoop on uh, what's going on. I don't know if, uh, if this is even uh, considered perspective here in Jackson County. Uh, it may be, I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I can honestly say I've not heard of anybody leasing here. But the reason I'm here is we think it's, uh, I mean, we don't want to see uh, counties banning hydraulic fracture based on uh, what we would characterize as misinformation. So I, I'm more than happy to answer a couple questions if you'd like. Yes? Yes, if you may not know the answer to this, but you probably are aware that much of southern Illinois has already been uh, had coal mining and there are a combination of underground and surface mines. Surface mines you pretty much know where things are. Sure. Underground you may not know where everything is. Uh, do you know if this industry has considered uh, looking at maps of underground mining? Do oh. they know the local, will there be an effect? Like if you go through, you know, will yeah, there be some not, It's not specific to hydraulic fracturing, but anytime you drill right. an oil well in an area where it may have been mined, right. you have to, you know, refer to the mining maps and the, and the Department of Natural Resources. 
and you try to drill through a pillar, but if not, you set mine stream. So yeah, that, that's not because unusual. Because we do have a subsidence issue yeah. here. Yeah, and, it, and the, I, you know, there are folks here who would disagree, but there, this is a phenomenon that occurs at thousands of feet. Uh, you, you don't propagate fractures up into where the, the mines right. were at, what, a few hundred feet. Yeah. So. Right. Yes? The uh, presentation you made describes wells that are drilled uh, carefully with a lot of uh, casing and uh, cement sure. around it and stuff like that. Uh, that presently, I, I couldn't know, is that required in yes. the state of Illinois? Yeah, there are well construction codes in Illinois, absolutely. Okay, and another thing you said that, and I looked on this thing, that millions of wells have been created without any confirmed... Uh, have been hyd hydraulically fractured, yes. Right. W without any, uh, uh, what was it, seepage page, upward? Page three. Page three. Not zero confirmed cases. Zero of confirmed cases of groundwater contamination in one million wells mm -hmm. uh, fracked over the last six right. years. Do you believe that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Would your opinion about fracking change if it turned out that it wasn't the case and in fact there had been well water contamination? Would it change? Well, I mean, it, it depends. Are we talking about uh, finding an isolated case or finding some widespread problem? I mean, I guess that depends on, you know, what... On whose will it is, yeah. perhaps, yeah. Um, well, oh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Well, I, I guess my other question kind of is a follow-up. Would the, would the industry uh, be concerned if, if, say, as a part of regulation of fracking, uh, that we required you to post a bond? There is a bond posted for wells. And, and you do that now for the, do you know how much it is or how they determine the it's a It's a structure based on the number of wells you have uh, and you pay it into a well <laughs> program. And there, uh, we're working on some additional regulation. Uh, I want to be clear on this. We're doing it not because we believe that there is a, uh, a, a real uh, problem that needs to be addressed, but the politics of the state are such that we're, we're, we're addressing the, the political realities of, of operating in this state. Does it make a difference if the strata above the shale that you're seeking to fracture uh, does it make a difference in terms of potential for contamination if that bedrock is more permeable? Uh, you, you cannot propagate fractures for thousands of feet. I know, but the, my, my point is that some bedrock, is, not all bedrock is the same, and therefore some of it may in fact already hit, already may be permeable, right? There are, if you look at the, uh, the rock in Illinois, there are uh, zones, thin zones of relatively permeable rock, right. but lots and lots of impermeable rock between what would be fractured and, and uh, thousands of feet of relatively impermeable rock that uh, would, would be on top of the zone to be fractured. I can also tell you in terms of how the, uh, the fracturing in shell works, typically uh, these Organic rich black shells have naturally occurring joints in them. This has been the experience in the Marcellus. They think uh, it will be the experience here in Illinois. I mean, we haven't drilled the first well. But a horizontal well encounters those naturally occurring uh, vertical fractures. Those fractures exist because if it's a organic rich black shell, when it's heated up uh, through because of burial depth to a, to a certain temperature and pressure, uh, hydrocarbons are produced from the organic material. It's converted from organic material into uh, hydrocarbons. The escape of those hydrocarbons, you know, millions of years ago, created, the hypothesis is, created these vertical fractures. The, Terry Engelder, a uh, uh, geologist from Penn State University, who's kind of famous uh, for his uh, work in this area, uh, gave, had a symposium at the University of Illinois a few months ago that I attended. His theory is that the fracturing really, the hydraulic fracturing, is really just an opportunity to uh, place sand or propant into those naturally occurring vertical fractures. 
and that that propping, you know, then keeps the the uh, the fractures, those vertical joints, open, and that's what allows the uh, the gas to uh, flow in. Yes. What's your opinion on the propagation of earthquakes around, you know, not high magnitude, but of course it's only a low magnitude earthquake if it happens somewhere other than where you live. I, I mean, what the Geological Survey of Illinois will tell you is they think that the, uh, and the USGS has come out th with this as well, the, these are not going to create, first of all, hydraulic fracturing itself really isn't what has created some seismic activity. It's the disposal of fluids uh, at depth. Uh, now, we, we dispose of thousands of barrels of fluid every day here in Illinois. I don't think we're going to be surprised by that. Uh, but in places where they have started putting fluid into, in Ohio, the case was they drilled a very deep well into the uh, basement rock, the actual granite that underlies the sedimentary rock, and encountered some type of uh, a fault. And the, by pumping water into it, they actually caused some seismic activity. Now. Now I want to emphasize, I mean, you know, we're talking about stuff that seismographs feel, but not necessarily, you know, people, so. It just, I think it concerns me because of the fact that the New Madrid Fault sits here and that's always in everybody's, in the back of their mind. Right. And uh, although it's been a hundred years since the Mississippi River flowed backwards. Right. Uh, rather not hasten that process. I, I would refer, I, I'm not an expert on the subject, but I will tell you that the, uh, the experts that have chimed in have, uh, <coughs> You know, I think it's fair to say of minimize, believe the risk is pretty minimal. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have a couple questions. Um, sure. You said there's not been any, any of the larger scale uh, type of hydraulic fracturing that's happened in Pennsylvania and in, in Illinois. No, that's there, happening. There now, hasn't right? been, you know, okay. the massive uh, okay. hydraulic fracturing. All right. And then, and then the other question I have is <clears throat> from the time that uh, you decide to uh, dig a well, and go through that process of fracturing. What I, I want you to explain uh, what authorities you have to deal with to first set that well and set a, you know how the permit how how it happens through that, and then from that process on how it's how it's uh, there's compliance to the rules that have to apply to that, and then once you close that, who are the authorities at that after it's done? How, how could you walk us through that whole process? Yeah, I mean, really, it's a pretty simple process. You have to get a permit to drill a well from who? From the oh, I'm sorry, from the Illinois Department of Natural yeah, Resources. Yeah. And so the this the Illinois Department of Natural Resources Division of Oil and Gas, which is part of uh, the Office of Mines and Minerals, issues a permit. So you have a permit application, and you have to, you know. Uh, tell them obviously well location that you own 100% or have the rights to 100% of the you know the rights to drill the well uh, and uh, then if you want to drill a horizontal well that requires uh, a different type of drilling unit so you have to you know explain all that uh, and then the uh, state uh, well inspector will inspect to see that the surface casing is set uh, you know that the the protocol is followed uh, and uh, then, you know, if you set production casing and you do a hydraulic fracture treatment, I mean, it's all regulated. Flow back is regulated, uh, again, all by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, that's and, pretty and much then, it. But at the end, after, after the, the uh, it's a plea of the natural gas or, or the oil, how do you go about closing it where it's, you're uh, done with there, it? There are plugging restoration okay. requirements, again, with the Illinois Department of Natural okay, Resources. And they're working alongside with the, with the Illinois EPA or the... Illinois uh, EPA, there's some joint handling uh, protocol for uh, if there is a spill uh, that, uh, th I mean, there's some involvement there. Uh, the UIC program, there's some imo involvement with Illinois EPA. Uh, but for the most part, it is regula regulated by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Some of you, if you've been involved in oil and gas or coal, know that uh, there was a standalone agency for mines and minerals until I don't even know how long it's been, 15, 20 years ago, I don't know. And it and then it was uh, placed in the Department of Natural Resources as the Office of Mines and Minerals. So. Oh, oh. Yeah, I've got a few questions. Sure. Uh, Brad, on your on page three, I just want to ask you about the water usage. Your figures here showing uh, water usage at the Marcellus shale drilling is being much less than all the other um, utilities here. Right. Is that are those figures just for Pennsylvania utilities? It says here Pennsylvania oh, water consumption. I, I don't. I really don't know. I I uh, I think 
it is, but I would have to go back and look at the slide. What, what, I, what I think the purpose of the slide, as much as anything, is when you're talking about the volumes of water used, they, they, they're big numbers, they sound big numbers, but I think it's hard to conceptualize what that really means. So the point is to illustrate how that stacks up against like power plants, you know, which use, you know, just enormous amounts of water. Yeah, I guess my question is that we don't really know um, how much drilling there is versus how much, you know, in Pennsylvania there's enormous amounts of coal mining. So it's, you know, your, your figure showing there's coal mining uses twice the water than the uh, fracking does, but we don't know how much. Right, yeah, and I apologize. Water. I should be able to answer that question. I think it's Pennsylvania specific, but I, I have to admit I do not know for sure. Okay, and then um, the... Um, Admittedly, a lot of water is, is used. Where, where do you get all that water from? Surface water is going to be the, uh, the, the source of the water in Illinois. I mean, it's going to be from, you know, the, the, these numbers, again, they sound like huge numbers, but if you take, you know, a fairly sizable uh, river, for example, you know, and, and measure the cross section, the amount of water that flows through it dwarfs, you know, in, in minutes what the, the usage. I mean, you know, that, that's where it's hard to conceptualize. It really is. Okay. Yes. On the water topic, so I'm raising my hand again. Since Illinois is in a severe drought, I'm not even sure how far down our reservoirs are, but it seems like this is not a real good year, just from that yeah, and I, standpoint, I, you know. I, I can't really, I don't know exactly. I mean, there's, there's no question, you know, reservoirs are down right now. Uh, I mean, it could very well be a, an issue that'll have to be addressed. We're working on some regulation right now in Illinois. Now, it's a far, it's not a, a complete process because there'll be, you know, all the stakeholders, environmental community and uh, industry and uh, Illinois Farm Bureau, a lot of people will chime in on this. But we're gonna have, probably end up comprehensive regulation that will require a water management plan, uh, uh, you know, things about like addressing traffic, uh, addressing site safety, things frankly that, that uh, aren't specifically addressed. Now I always kind of take exception to some of that because I will tell you, anybody that if you operate a business in Illinois, you know, we have OSHA, we have safety, you know, requirements, but this will be kind of a, a more specific to the operation. So. Uh, I have another question, I've got sure. a couple more questions, it's okay. Um, what, what kind of additional infrastructure is necessary for, the, for these operations? Does uh, additional infrastructure need to be built, ro additional roads? If, well, here, here's a, there's some, uh, an example of that. Uh, what Illinois is, at this point, is almost exclusively an oil producing state. We produce about 26,000 barrels a day oil. Very little gas production. This play will certainly include gas, it may not be limited to, to methane or dry gas, or maybe some natural gas liquids. And because of th those are components or uh, hydrocarbons that aren't currently produced in any scale here in Illinois, uh, yeah, there will be pipelines built. There's no question about it. There'll be pipelines, there'll be, uh, I, I think there's a chance, uh, uh, well, let me, let me tell you what has happened in, uh, be, as a result of Marcellus. West Virginia and Ohio, and I don't even know for sure where this ended up, uh, I think West Virginia, uh, there was a pretty uh, uh, robust uh, 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 competition to see who could get an ethane cracker, which is, you know, I'm no expert on petrochemicals, but a petrochemical facility to refine or crack ethane, which is a natural gas liquid that's very, that's likely to be produced with this play in the New Albany. Uh, the ethane, petro, you know, petrochemical industry has come back to the United States because of these shell plants. We were moving all of that, you know, Dow Chemical, all these folks were moving to, to uh, the Middle East where natural gas was cheaper. Well, they're coming back home now and building things like ethane crackers. So infrastructure, the pipelines are the obvious example and all the midstream stuff, which I'm no expert on, but yeah, that, those are, those will have to be a part of the equation. So you'll see massive, uh, development in that area if this play works. I mean, if it doesn't work, they're all going to go Who pays for that, for all that infrastructure? Is it, is it well, a private company? Yeah, I mean, you get a lot, obviously, the, you know, the people who provide the capital for that are typically private equity, and they'll throw that money, uh, and, and then, the, you know, they, of course, hope to make money off the producers who will pay to, to what, utilize is that Is there any system. infrastructure that, the, that public entities need to provide? The, in, in places where these shell plays have really developed, and again, you know, that's the part I can't tell you how big this will be. I can't even tell you this is going to work. 
But in places where it has really been a successful development, like the Bakken in North Dakota, uh, there are strains on roads and things of that nature, no question about it. Uh, and so, yeah, th those things will come into play. Housing, I, I will tell you, there's a, in, I get, I, there, there are hundreds of landmen in Southern Illinois right now working in the courthouses. In, I live in Wayne County. If you go to Fairfield, the courthouse, you'll, you, you can meet petroleum landmen, about 30 or 40 probably every day. Same thing for uh, McLeansboro, Hamilton County, uh, Saline, Franklin, and on and on and on, White County. The, uh, the housing is already an issue. Um, I, uh, uh, it, it will become a real issue. I, now, I would argue that's a good problem, but you know, I know there are folks who don't want to build houses either. So Do they import workers? Is that the, the, I mean, one of the people say that the, it, the job creation is, is somewhat illusory because these are specialty workers who are imported. There, there is no question that uh, the skilled trades are, are not here right now. There's no question about it. So yes, there would be people who come in, but I can assure you there'll be plenty of folks uh, that uh, will be more than happy to learn to weld and things of that nature. So. Yes. Uh, yes. Living here on the northern fringes of the New Madrid Fault, I think that's my main concern with all of this and the stability of the land right. uh, under it. Um, I'm not familiar with Ohio and their land structures are uh, seismic zones. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on, you're, you're saying we pump in water, the chemicals, you pump it out. Have you been monitoring the voids in uh, say Ohio since that's a? The, well, I mean, the process of hydraulic fracturing will take a day or two or three or whatever. And so the pump trucks come, they set up, the frack tanks are set up, they plumb it all together, pump the fluid in at high rates, and then when the treatment is deemed sufficient, they pack up and go home, and then the flow back has to be collected. Uh, you don't get it all back, but the flow back comes back, and it has to be disposed of, or whatever. The, the process itself, I mean, you're talking about pumping under, admittedly, high pressures, but high pressures under thousands of feet of rock, the, the seismic activity, to, to my understanding, that has been, I guess, associated with hydraulic fracturing is not a direct association, but the flowback, uh, the disposal of, where they've drilled new disposal wells and maybe put it into a zone uh, or intersected a fault and you have some seismic activity because you've lubricated that fault and so you get some measurable seismic activity. Uh, it, 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 I, I don't know uh, if the science has settled on that, but it does appear that that has happened in a couple of cases. And one other question. Um, your description of the drilling sounds very familiar to BP's drilling in the Gulf of Mexico, the horizontal uh, okay. drilling and all. What are some of the safeguards, you, you hinted at it, uh, what are some of the safeguards that you would implement to uh, avoid well, a disaster like that? I mean, first of all, of course, that was in deep water. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the totally different situation. Uh, I mean, what caused that won't be a part of the process here on land, of course. But having said that, uh, I mean, valid question. Uh, don't, don't take that the wrong way. But, I mean, again, you know, the safeguarding the, the freshwater zone is, is accomplished with the, uh, the casing the surface casing, then the intermediate casing, et cetera. Uh, the uh, safeguard of the, uh, you know, you've got to handle the chemicals properly, but, uh, uh, well, I guess as far as the drilling, I mean, these, you know, these will be, uh, there'll be a blowout preventer, uh, you know, in case there is some sort of a kickback on the, uh, if you encounter a gas burning zone, you know, that has some, some pressure. Uh, but these are all, you know, the, no, that, por por that portion of this, the drilling, Literally, we've been doing it for 100 years in Illinois. So, I mean, there, there's not new ground there. Now, now the horizontals is different. We've done some horizontal drilling, but this would be on a much larger scale, so I don't mean to imply that it's exactly the same. Yes? I have one more question. You know, uh, South Illinois has uh, got a lot of uh, the Shawnee National Forest. How often have you, since you've been in the industry, or do you know of that, uh, there's ever been uh, land like that opened up for 
I mean, that's a whole other ball game. Have you, have, have you can ask some of these folks. Okay, well, I'm yeah. saying, has, no, has that ever know. happened? I mean, like, been, I mean, in other states, has there ever been, uh, not in Shawnee National Forest, what I'm saying, in other states, you've been in the industry now for how long? For how many years have you been in the industry? Well, I mean, uh, okay. a bunch. Okay, years okay. so my question is, is, have you seen in other states where they open up uh, places that are normally uh, natural forest areas and they all go ahead and open a frac fracture. Have you seen that happen? Well, I mean, it's done through the federal government. Okay. Bureau of Land Management, I think. Okay. Uh, I, uh, right. Forestry, whatever. I, I mean, obviously, that would be a, uh, a totally different process. Okay. So, but they do actually have, uh, I, I've, uh, since I've been at IOGA, I guess just the one time, because I think it's a 10 year review. And the, I mean, it's not uh, expressly forbidden uh, drilling in, in national. Uh, on, on federal ground. Uh, the, the Shawnee, to my knowledge, I, I don't know since it's become a national force, it's ever had a well come on. So. Yeah. yeah, Brad, we've heard concerns that uh, about the 2005 energy bill, that it exempts fracking from all sorts of environmental regulations. Do you, can you comment on that? Are you familiar with Well, you know, what people are saying is, that they, this is the, you know, the Halliburton loophole or whatever. The, 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 it was never regulated under the Safe Drinking Water Act, ever. So there wasn't an exemption created in the fund. I don't know what to tell you. No. But there are RICRA exemptions for petroleum. Uh, well, energy. you're talking about the, but this is a, it's a new technique. You, you, I mean, you mentioned. Yeah, in, in 2005, uh, high, high volume hydraulic fracturing was being employed but nothing like what we're seeing now. So I, I'm not sure that was ever really contemplated, but you know, I don't know. I can't really answer that, brother. Are the forces from the post? Okay. At this point, I want to interject to you because we do have other business to take care of. I will entertain five questions from the audience. That's going to be it tonight. Uh -huh. is, there a, is there a leader that wants to determine the I have no idea. Uh, if they close that, that loophole uh, in, the, in the Clean Water Act, would you all still be able to function? Would you still be able to do business with the high volume hydraulic fracking? Um, I don't know that it would have. I, I don't know what kind of impact it would have, honestly. I'm not, I just don't deal with federal issues much. I mean, would all the business and all, all the things <laughs> like those that depend on that business, I mean, would they just be completely out of work, out, you know, out of play? I, I, don't really, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I, I don't know how to answer the question. Uh, I, I don't know what the ramifications would be. I've never really seen a, uh, an analysis of it. I apologize. I mean, I'd be more than happy to each question. I just don't know. This is so safe. And I'm a scientist, by the way, and I just wrote a lot of stuff to say that what you're saying is wrong. Okay. Um, if it's so safe, how come municipalities are being prevented from exercising their rights? in protecting citizens at the state level. I mean, you, these oil and gas industries have come through and put forth policies so that municipalities cannot protect their citizens, such as zoning things, making sure that you can, you're zoned to crack, you know, in our backyards. But, you know, it's all safe, right? But citizens aren't allowed to protect themselves, and doctors are prevented from talking about the toxic chemicals to their clients, to their patients. But I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. Yeah, I had a question. I didn't know if he had an answer. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you as far as did, we, we have a regulatory program in Illinois. I mean, we don't, I think what you're describing are, are correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, you talk about it in other states. The question is why, if it's so safe, has the oil and gas industry put forth so much money to make policies at the state level that prevents municipalities from protecting their citizens and exercising? So, so in other words, the question is, why would the industry oppose prohibitions? Because it's what we do for a living. Not prohibitions, but citizens' rights and people's rights at the municipal level. I, 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 I apologize. I, I honestly don't know exactly how to answer that. I mean, if the if the effort at the municipal level, I didn't have to deal with me. There's a bill that directly prevents citizens from exercising their rights and protecting their rights from the oil and gas industry. Is that in Illinois? It's in a lot of places. Okay, I, I apologize, I'm not familiar with that. It's at the state level, it's like at a federal level, so states can prevent municipalities from protecting citizens' rights. I, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not familiar with that, Phil. I, I apologize. 
Yes, thank you. I had a question about your uh, estimate of uh, 200,000 new jobs in Ohio. Uh, okay, you, yes. you, you gave that. First of all, is that is that an industry estimate of, of gross new jobs? Um, I, I would have to go and get the, the citation for that. I, I mean, it came from, uh, I believe I got it from, it, it may have been from, I, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Uh, so, well, my, my, the point is, is this an estimate of just the new jobs in the industry itself is going to grow from 4,000 to 200,000 in Ohio, according to the information you provided? I, I believe that's correct, yes. Because the in 2011, they say there was 4,614 jobs, which would be direct. In other words, not including induced and indirect jobs, that the jobs that are created as, as a result. So I, my understanding that these are projections for direct employment. All right, so these are not projections of net new jobs, and it wouldn't take into account countervailing factors like the economic losses occasioned uh, by losses to farmers and homeowners caused by environmental damage, or it doesn't measure declining property values, or the increased cost of increased traffic flow, or the consequent loss of disposable income to people as a result of all these losses. It's not really a measurement of net new jobs. I, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know, uh, I certainly don't know how to quantify all that. I mean, I, I, I guess it doesn't account for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Vote, vote, vote. Um, I'm going to assume that because you're here presenting to us that you're fairly well versed in, in what you're saying, and, and I'm, I'm getting a lot of I don't knows. Um, you mentioned in your own words that the fracking level that you're looking at is about 4,000 feet deep. Well, the new one we show yet. I mean, and actually, and we and we typically store the hazardous materials that come out of these in type one injection wells. Yes. Class two injection wells. Class two, rather. Uh, and do you know uh, where class one injection wells are employed in Illinois? It's where the chemical, the actual, I, I don't know where they're located. There's just a handful, I believe. They, they are located where the geology is what you term semi permeable. What we have here is underlying massive permeable layers. Massive permeable layers. A type two well protects much, much less because of the exemption from RECRA. That, that, whole, that whole idea um, has basically said that the protections that you yourself are espousing are not really in place. And I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is one of the board members had an excellent question. And it was a question about the overlying rock layer. Mm -hmm and implications to the overlying rock layers. And my question to you would be this. In a permeable zone with semi-permeable layers, your goal is to fracture. This layer is hard, highly fractured already. What is the specific gravity of the benzenes, and the toluenes, and the toxic things the specific gravity of those things, are you familiar with that? Yeah, I know those. So what would what would happen are there? You, are you suggesting that, that, that they'll migrate upward into drinking water? From because I don't I don't think that's supported by the science at all. Are you suggesting they don't? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. I can write a recent study in Thank you. Uh, I have a simple question. I actually own the mineral rights under my land and what I keep hearing is we're going to drill a well and then fracture horizontally. So how do you protect me from infringement from your well being drilled when I own those rights and yeah, you they, can't control that? If yeah, I, you can't, you can't, uh, they couldn't access your minerals unless you... So agree. but my neighbor, you could access his minerals well, yeah, you have a drill unit, well on his land. You have a drilling unit established uh, that is... Uh, based on the type of well, so a horizontal well would have to be, you know, the, it, you've got to be 330 feet from the external lease boundary to protect the uh, correlative rights of the adjacent mineral owner. I mean, that's how it works in that moment. So your well won't extend farther than a 660 foot diameter, is that what I just heard? 
330 foot rig. Well, I mean, if you drill a lateral, you can drill it a mile, but you have to have at least. So, I, 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 I don't know if I'm answering you. But, I'm, but your, your minerals, I mean, you, you control your minerals. Yeah, I, all the way to China or wherever that stops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to ask the Chinese. Yeah, right. I can answer from there. My, my concern is that you can drill a conventional well. I don't, I'm not, I'd have to look and see what the, on, the, on these. The, they'll require, I think most of these are going to end up being a special or modified drilling unit. And you have to go through administrative gearing and all that. So, so there's kind of special tools. So it's not 330 feet apart. I mean, on a, I'm, I'm curious. His question was, how do you protect me from my neighbor's lease? And you said you got to be 330 feet away from the boundary. From now, yes, only right. applies to the, the well that drills vertically, but not horizontally. Well, and, and I apologize. I wish I had some way to, to illustrate. What, where the part, that, the lateral part of that, all has to be part of that drilling unit. So you can't drill under someone without, you know, having access or, or having leased those minerals. I, I didn't answer. I apologize. I didn't answer that very well to you. I'm sorry, I the size of the services for statements from the others. I've had those stars. I'm going to discontinue that aspect of this mission. Please forgive me first of all for not anticipating the lives of others and not having sits for everybody. I'm sorry about that. I do want to express my sense to you for coming out. At this point, I want to send the minute over to the state attorney's office to Mr. Brennan, who has some information for us. Mr. Chairman, this, your committee asked the state's attorney's office. You referred to us in ordinance. I think you all had a copy of it. I don't know who offered this ordinance. It came to the county board as a proposed ordinance. You referred it to the state's attorney's office and asked us to review it and what our thoughts were and whether the county could adopt this ordinance. I'm going to say from the onset, it's the state's attorney's opinion, state's attorney's office opinion. You cannot, you do not have the authority to adopt this ordinance. And I'm going to give you some of the reasons. Uh, let's explain first the ordinance, very briefly, would prohibit hydraulic fracking and horizontal drilling. It would also prohibit anyone from storing, transporting, producing, or depositing fracking byproducts materials or chemicals into land, air, or water. Some of these chemicals might even be deemed hazardous or toxic. The ordinance further calls for heavy fines, setting up a special ecological restoration fund, and to give standing, legal standing, to private citizens to enforce the ordinance. The first issue is the county's authority to enter into this ordinance. You have to understand, under Illinois, this county is a non-home rule unit government. As a non-home rule government, we only have the powers that are given to us expressly by the General Assembly or the state constitution. There is nothing anywhere expressed that I can find allowing the county to adopt hydraulic fracking or horizontal drilling bands. In fact, the county doesn't even regulate or have anything to do with mining or drilling at this moment. And in fact, there's nothing in the county code regarding mining or drilling or the authority of the county to even regulate these processes. The proposed ordinance gives several statutory authorities, which it is believed give the county the authority to adopt the ordinance. But these, enact, these, these enactments are just general uh, grants of authority. There's nothing expressed in any of those that says the county can ban fracking, the county can ban horizontal drilling, or for that matter, anything to do with mining or drilling. I am also aware of the Tri-Power tri Resources City of Carlisle Appellate Court case that was decided by our appellate court in Mount Vernon earlier this year. And that case basically had to do with the City of Carlisle trying to prevent Tri-Power from drilling in their city limits. But the appellate court did not fully resolve the controversy involving these two parties. 
the court only answered a very narrow question of whether or not the city could ban drilling within its corporate limits. The court said it could. However, the court left undecided the issue of whether or not the city could stop Tri-Power from drilling after it had already received a state permit to do so. As far as the substance of that case, it doesn't apply to the county in our present circumstance, nor does it support the proposed ordinance. First, the case does not appear to have anything to do with fracking. Second, the case relied on the zoning powers given to the city in the municipal code. The county doesn't follow the municipal code, it follows the county code. The county code does not, this county does not have zoning. And even if it did, there's nothing in the county zoning law addressing fracking, drilling, or mining. And finally, the Tri-Power case had nothing to do with the prohibit prohibition of storage, transport, or disposal of fracking, drilling compounds. The decision also relied on Section 13 of the Oil and Gas Act, and that act specifically references cities, villages, and incorporated towns. Unincorporated counties are not mentioned. It's for those reasons, it is my belief, the county does not have the authority to adopt this ordinance. There is also the issue with preemption. And preemption is a complicated issue, but basically it says that if there's another superior body of government that already regulates this area, the lesser unit of government may or may not have the power to regulate or co-regulate. It is my opinion that the state of Illinois already regulates most of this. And that issue alone, even, even regardless of the county's authority to enter into this, the preemption issue is, and is enough to also prohibit the county from entering into the ordinance. I looked at the oil and gas regulations, specifically found in 62, section 62 of the Illinois Administrative Code, part 240, and I found one, two, three, four, five, at least five, if not six references that seemed to touch on hydraulic fracking. Even the New Albany Shell Pool was mentioned, and I know that was mentioned here earlier this evening. Also, I note that section 240.550 of the Illinois Administrative Code, section 62, pertains to the disposal and storage of oil field waste and other waste. Also, the Water Pollution Discharge Act prevents and provides enforcement for anyone or any entity impermissibly discharging pollutants into the state's waters. It also authorized units of government to pursue violators for the cleanup costs. Would that include us? Yes. The Illinois Environmental Protection Act already seems to govern much of this area. Section 9 pertains, pertains to air pollution. Section 13 pertains to water pollution. Section 21 pertains to land pollution. Section 31 of the Illinois Environmental Protection Act addresses the enforcement rules. The Illinois Contr Pollution Control Board is their enforcement board, and they've adopted these rules at Section 5 of the Illinois Environmental Protection Act, as well as their rules found at 35 Illinois Administrative Code, Part 103. Nowhere does the state of Illinois give local governments any authority to co-regulate unless the state is delegated to that unit of government to do so, and it appears from my reading and understanding of the Illinois Environmental Protection Act, it's only on a very limited basis that they will delegate. The county is therefore, in my opinion, preempted by state law from doing so. There is also the issue of federal preemption. This is a complicated issue. I'm not an expert at it, nor do I want to try to address it. All I can say is I know there has been some recent decisions. There's a Sackett decision from the U.S. Supreme Court from March of this year, which seemed to uh, say the Safe Drinking Water Act did not pertain to hydraulic fracking, but there's some, there's some opinions that that confuse the issue. Uh, there's also the Federal Clean Water Act. Again, I'm not an expert on any of these acts. Uh, and I'm not sure what the interplay with these federal acts are with the state law as well as a local county ordinance. With respect to air pollution, 
The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has issued regulations designed to reduce harmful air pollution from the oil and natural gas industry. The final rules include the first federal air standards for natural gas wells that are hydraulically fractured, along with requirements for several other sources of pollution in the oil and gas industry. What I can conclude from this is that our ordinance is preempted, at least at the state level, if not at the federal level, what space the county would have to co-regulate with these other units of government, uh, if any, it, it is not clear to, to me. Uh, for the reasons I state, it is our opinion that the county does not have the authority to adopt this ordinance.